I sit down with Alia Sarur of The Really Cool Studio and Mariam Shah from Cocoon Culture to hear how these collectives focus on building alternative ways of working within the systems, as well as aspiring to bring together an otherwise fragmented and competitive market. with building your collective what's the vision or end goal like where where do you see it I was always on the lookout for creatives discovering them online on Instagram and finding them in these like silos that all work together and never having that connectivity so essentially we honestly wanted to start it um, as a digital project as a website that has all these names as yellow pages kind of thing and then we realized that there's a lot of legwork behind that and to actually be able to place everyone in one space isn't going to be conducive unless we're programming it, right. uh, yeah. projects that we're doing, uh, or revenue streams or whatever, is to very slowly start planting the seed for the infrastructure of what a creative economy would look like. And so actually building these programs potentially online or in the space where we can have a transparency scale for salaries, yeah. helping creatives write um, their contracts. Yes. Because a lot of independent creatives don't know how to do that, ourselves included. We've all, I've been in that loop as well, where I've done a lot of work where I'm like, it's six months later, why am I still in the feedback loop? Yeah, exactly. And not getting paid for it. Exactly. What were your intentions with building the collective and the community? Like, what, what is the vision, like the end goal? The original intention was to hold space for up-and-coming artists to hone their craft and to develop their skills and to network mm. and to bridge the gap between them and established artists. The, the two main things that developed or changed is that first of all we now see that we can't just be working with artists mm. you know and the, the issue with like the label artist mm. is intimidating whereas like mm. you know everyone mm. has an artist inside them everyone is an artist yes, yes exactly. i agree we yes. talked about that yes so we support and empower people that already associate with art or are already practicing and other people that don't necessarily want to be artists don't want to create a career in art yeah. but they they have a lot to say still yeah and they could say that with different mediums and we could nice. provide that nice. in a way that isn't intimidating and in a That's way that great. doesn't require you to have a background or any kind of skill mm -hmm. obviously saying that you want empowered artists or artists that have agency or creatives that have agency is like vague like with time we started noticing that the way to achieve that mm -hmm is to get them up to, to try to find them opportunities or to see where opportunities can arise mm. for artists mm. to, to have good work you know good mm. projects that are also still conceptually relevant to them in a way or are interesting to them I think that a lot of the tensions will arise or could arise if we replicate models of things that don't work for us right that we've already tried and don't work so agency models we know that that doesn't work yeah for example it works really well for the client but it does not work well on the back end yeah. tensions will arise if it's competitiveness over collaboration exactly and i think when collaboration is key and it's win-win exactly. as you're saying everyone really is on the winning end of it um, and you see that for you to grow everyone else has to grow and for them to grow you have to grow and exactly. there, there's a bit of push there or a 10-year goal is to have a database with, yeah. with thousands of names, yeah. right? Like nice. the ten, tens and twenties yes. and like hundreds of thousands, if we can reach that. And to be able yes. to scale yes. where we can have really cool, essentially in every single Arab city, yeah. and to also have really cool pop-ups across the world, right? Yes. To showcase as many Arab artists as possible. Whether we represent them or just have them on the database, whatever it is, that's really our 10-year goal. We're like, if we're, we manage to do five or six Arab cities, 10 European metropolitan, yeah. hopefully New York too, cities, um, then, yeah. yeah. 
I came from an open source background. You know, yeah. I was raised into thinking that especially creative resources and intellectual resources exist yeah. to be shared. Yeah. Uh, but then when I started running a business, <laughs> uh, I yeah. realized that, you know, there's a good balance. Yes. Okay. We started working with sponsors mm -hmm. and this was like our like way into the corporate world, you know, as a creative space and a, a space that's specialized in curating creative experiences. Like that's already, you know, yes. difficult uh, yes. as a sell. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But we started like creating a formula of, you know, how to communicate with them, how to convince them, how to get them on board, how to even convince them to change their own policies uh, and tell them that that's going to benefit them and all of this. So, because I have a lot of friends in the creative yes. industry and I want to support them, yes. a lot of the time people will ask me, uh, how do you uh, connect with sponsors or can yes. you connect me to this uh, yes. sponsor? Or, yes. And I'm always very open with uh, the information. Uh, so I, I give them guidelines, I give them guidance, I tell them, oh, you can talk to this person okay. or I can ask them if I can connect you with them. Yeah. But I wouldn't share the actual template. I wouldn't yeah. share the document but, but itself this is actually a good that point. we built, you know? No, but you're right, this is a good point, you know? Mm. Um, teach a man to fish. Not to exactly. Fish. It's not about getting spoon fed because what happens then is you get complacent, you get lazy, you don't creative anymore. So if everything is just fed to you, you're not actually in your power. Do you not feel like one almost needs to participate in the status quo or work with the status quo in order to find a means of working against the grain down the line? Because at the end of the day, a structure is in place for better or for worse.